And welcome back, folks, to, uh, what is it, week five now? <laughs> I, I always forget to check that. They're just flying by. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, week five of Chair League, season two. Uh, this week, we have El Boyos versus Ban Bonsai Legends. And uh, with me is, yeah, with me as always is my co-caster, New Type. How you doing? I'm doing just fine tonight, Synth. Uh, oh, transfer us over to the right overlay here. Oops. Oh my gosh, come on, man. Yeah, Our intro is ruined. We got to start it all over. All right. No. Drink, okay. Drink uh, hand in hand. Got to, no. got to restart draft. All right. <laughs> but, so yeah, no, we've got uh, El Boyos and Bonsai Legends, two seasoned, grizzled teams who uh, can trace their 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 histories back to the opening days of chair league all the way back in you know god knows when it feels like forever now but now mm -hmm. both teams participants in in season one with uh, pretty lengthy records uh eight games each played in season one um el boyos with a three and five record in season one and bonsai legend with a one and seven record uh you know closing out the season last year so these teams have been playing for a long time and they are some rough and tumble teams they're here for the passion. They're here for the sport of it. I love these sort of matchups. But uh, uh, currently in this uh, this current season, El Boyos is uh, you know striking out uh, ahead. They've got a good uh, good lead currently with in their division. Uh, they're three and one at the moment. And Bonsai Legends nothing to scoff at with a two and two record. So somebody here tonight is going to be uh, you know pushing forward here and uh, somebody else. And, you know, you know how it goes, man. It's the same old, same old song and dance. Um, that's that's chair league, baby. Yep, fifty percent of the teams have to win, and fifty percent of the teams have to lose. Fifty percent of the time, it happens every time. It help. Fifty fifty. It's that's what it is. Don't don't go there. It, <laughs> it's a terrible place. Um, it's a silly place. It's a silly place. Oh, you finishing off a bottle there? Oh, I didn't even notice that on the camera. <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Pay no attention to that alcoholic over there. He's just drinking. Uh, yeah. Hey, you know what? It makes it more fun. It's, you know, you got to have a, a, a cup in hand. Otherwise, with, we got to restart the draft. With other teams in another, like, sport or another venue, I would say you've got to drink it to make it tolerable. But uh, not chair league, not heroes. No, I like to stay somewhat lucid during these <laughs> matches, during these games, and... Uh, Provide us with some, you know, some top, top flight, top tier commentary um, about the people who do the things and, and break the buildings. So, um, yeah, we should be starting here shortly. Uh, this, this is, this is my favorite part of the night, honestly. So, so what's yeah. our map tonight, partner? Oh, uh, we are on Towers of Doom. It feels like we're on Towers of Doom a lot. Mm. Um, it was a popular popular one from i th was it gillyweed's favorite map or something yeah i think at dreamhack this past uh weekend which oh we yeah no that i mean it uh <laughs> it's a popular one it's it's different all right i think there's i think a lot of teams pick it because you have a bit of you have a little bit of a safety net for those post 20 wipes mm -hmm. it's not it's not nearly as well you know you may have you may have been stomping the entire match or ahead the whole match, but your team wiped at twenty one, so your game is over. Mm -hmm. um, it, it definitely it, has a lot more uh, potential for uh, for very good, you know, team team um, team fights. Yeah, it's definitely a. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, and I mean, what makes a map appealing and interesting for uh, a set of you know, professionals varies greatly from what makes a game or uh, makes a map or a hero for that matter, appealing or interesting for us plebs. Um, so yeah, so, some, some things about these teams, speaking of picking heroes and picking maps, um, El Boyos, not afraid of, uh, picking some, some, some interesting heroes. Um, last week, uh, in their game, uh, which they did win, um, they played at Chogol. So, uh, and we might see some, some, some fancy, wacky stuff from El Boyos. I'd love to see that. Bonsai Legends, um, not afraid to 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 pick the most powerful characters in the game. Um, last week, they picked. Uh, they had a tracer in their lineup, and uh, it was used fairly effectively. Although they didn't come away with the game. Um, so yeah, uh, on Towers Towers Doom. 
I know we talk frequently about you know what heroes we like to see on this map and what heroes are, are powerful or, or are strong on this map. Um, uh, so let's let's get this one out of the let's get this one out of the way early here. Falstad, yay or nay? Um, sorry, hold on one second. So while Synth is off doing whatever it is that he's doing, um, we'll talk about Falstad, uh, which is Synth's favorite character in the game. Um, I think we'll probably see Falstad involved in this map. He's annoying as all insufferable hell on this map. Um, likely we'll see Zagara as well, but the, the, the real the real troublemakers lately in the meta have been Kael'thas and Li Ming. Um, the mages, once again... Um, much like Kael'thas and Jaina dominated the summer of 2015, it looks like um, a different set of mages, uh, or similar set of mages, uh, Kael'thas and Li Ming are dominating the uh, spring and winter of 2016. So, uh, yeah, Kael'thas, despite all those reworks, all those changes, still as terrifying as ever. And, uh, you know, we'll see how, we, uh, how this all plays out, what teams, uh, what teams decide on what here. And I think Synth got wife aggroed. I'm not certain, but uh, I don't think I have any taunts or anything to pull that one away. Um, nor do I want to step into that one. But um, but yeah, welcome, welcome everyone, all two of you, I believe. It's lovely having you here tonight. Um, yep. All right, sorry about that. Uh, just a little bit of bad news from other stuff. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah, okay. So. Uh, I apologize. What? No, oh, no, no, no. We were we were just talking about how handsome you were. Oh, okay. That's uh, glad glad to hear it. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I got my um so lazy can't move shirt on tonight. Oh, okay. I'm wearing what I wore at the office. It's <laughs> not very not, it's not very fancy or neat. Yep. Um. No, it's fine, dude. Yeah. So yeah, um, I was telling I was telling uh, I was telling our viewers who have now bought stuff though. Do we have three people in here? Oh my god! So yeah, no. I've just been telling our viewers, uh, you know, just sort of who we can expect, what's going on, uh, the 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 horrors of Kael'thas and oh, the geez. of late, and their 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 ironclad grip on the meta currently. Um, uh, I took over your typical role of gushing about Falstad. Oh, thank you. Uh, who who unfortunately may get his wings clipped in the next patch. Um, yeah, don't remind me. Uh, yeah, so so freaking over. What was it? Overload or yeah, Overload is the talent's name. Um, that's being removed from the overdrive. game. Overdrive. That's what it was. Yeah, I I am so sad. Uh, and that's coming what next week, right? Next yeah, Tuesday. I think it's coming with this PTR, which just uh, which just launched this previous Tuesday, introducing um, Chromie into the PTR into the game, and uh, we'll have to see how that works out. I personally have not had any time unfortunately to really get into the ptr um so curious to see how that character is playing out certainly looks interesting uh and yet another mid to long range mage with some some really neat uh abilities i do i i I would like anything i would like anything to to further diversify the current mage setup that we have because right now it's so stale it's so stagnant Mm -hmm. kael'thas just just craps all over everybody. It's, oh, it's jeez, it's it's what it's um Leeming, uh, Jaina, Kael'thas, right? Yep, that's pretty, pretty much, much it. it. <laughs> Mage kind of worked for a bit, but um, well, the problem is no one picks um Hinterland. Like, yeah, because 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 you know because Gust is just that it's it's that yeah. it's, that's stupid. It's that good. I mean, uh, Gust is really good. We we saw some awesome games at uh, DreamHack. Mm-hmm. Um, this past weekend, and and that was a lot of great uh, Falstad play <laughs> or so, or bands. So right now we've got um, most of the teams uh, accounted for. We're waiting on a couple of members from each team here, mm-hmm. uh, and we'll be starting up the draft as soon as everyone it has reported in, and uh, you know we've taken attendance here. Yep. But um. But yeah, uh, you know, should be exciting. Um, any any hints on Towers of Doom that we can think of? <laughs> uh, Sorry to put game, you on the spot late, there. Late game's a big deal, but yeah. don't underestimate the early game. You know, 
getting 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 four cannon shots in at level twenty is the exact same thing as getting four cannon shots in at level one at level. I guess it would probably be like level three or level four when they first pop up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, one I mean, thing as far as timings are concerned mm-hmm. on this map, um, you know, uh, the, the one of the recent changes. Um, uh, guarantees uh, three altars to to rise up uh, at the first and the fifth uh, tower uh, phase, or pardon me, altar phases. So, um, you know, very very you know conscious, cognizant teams um, can 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 take advantage of that. So, okay, we know that. This next, this next set of uh, you know, altars, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a triple, triple spawn. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. Yeah. So um, the this is one of the few maps where the objective is is absolutely the only way to play this game. You have to have um, you have to capture the objectives. There's there's nothing around. You, you can't play otherwise. Um, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people dislike this map. Um, <laughs> there is no counterplay to being able to cap the objective. So you have to build a team that can take team fights. If you, yeah, if comp- you... composition is key. And mm-hmm. like composition from level one is key. Mm-hmm. Like you can, you can build a late game composition, but you have to be so dominant that you mitigate the 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 losses that you incur early in the game. Absolutely. And so, like, yeah, it, you'll find you know I think a, a good balance between early game and late game heroes for for you know for most teams is going to be the key to to, uh, to 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 winning the day here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, the what was it? Um, Zagara Zagara's Maw is really effective. We did see. TLV tried last week on this yeah, map, uh, right. not to very good effect, but um, but I think more than anything, you just need good team fight, good engages. Um, angry circles still rules the day, you know. Hashtag yeah. angry circles. I'm, I'm, hashtag I'm, 2016. I'm, I'm angry, <laughs> angry mages. Um, what do you think the likelihood is of seeing a double support? Uh, you know what? If you count Toronto as a support, then yes, very high. Very high. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's so, that's what it is. It, it's it's Toronto plus a support, or or Tassadar plus a support. Like, um, it, it seems you know the the supports or the utility supports are getting paired in with the um with the with the main supports, and yeah, so so yeah, you're you're seeing a lot of that in the pro divisions and the uh, in the uh, Mm-hmm. Pro scene there. So, um, now, do you think that kind of strategy is just a little too? Um, do you think that's? Do you think that's sort of like skill gated? Do you think that a, a a lower level team that an amateur team can consistently play two supports on 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 you know relevant maps? Or do you think that uh, do you think that that's uh, something that, that 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 everybody could could hopefully you know learn to run at some point? Um, the two supports. I think two supports can be uh, taken up by anyone, um, depending on the map. So any any object or sorry any map that you cannot roam as a five man uh, group or even a four one, uh, that is where a dual support um, comes in handy. If you're ro- rolling as a four one um, or a five, you know five man, uh, basic basically you know wrecking crew. Uh, you only need one support, I feel. Um, but any sort of split maps, like for example, this one, uh, Dragonshire. Mm-hmm. Um, let me think. Uh, well, any any one that you have to split up, uh, yeah, you know, into two groups of more than two. No, so I can I can agree with you on that one. Yeah, and and, and that's where you know a solo support or sorry a dual support. Um, will come in handy because you have uh, some extra heals on the side of uh, uh, that, that second support. Yeah, there. exactly. And you can rotate the supports out. That's actually another important um, aspect. Mm-hmm. Uh, being able to ro- rotate those supports and and you know no one's ever oom. Um. And uh, and so we just got our uh, our groups oh, here. We got everybody. Thank, 
goodness. No, uh, uh, yeah. Wonderful. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, send out the OBS links. And um, give me two seconds here. All right. So uh, El Boyos is our home team tonight. So they're going to be uh, with the first ban and the first pick here. Mm -hmm. uh, Bonsai Legends. Uh, going to be our second, uh, going to be our away team here. So, um, so yeah, we'll have to see what their see what their plan is, see what their thoughts are. Um, let me see real quick here. We've got histories for these teams on this map. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm just taking the so sending out the captain's links right now. And uh, and we should get ourselves a draft very shortly here. So Bonsai Legends has indicated that they are ready, and uh, we're just waiting on the El Boyos side. Hmm. So who do you think is, is going to be banned? Kelthos. <laughs> uh, I I have to I, agree with you there. I would I wouldn't be surprised if Kelthos got banned. I wouldn't be surprised if Zagara also got banned. She's mm -hmm. just uh, her, her, she just fits into every single composition. Yeah, the sight on this especially, it being able to predict how many people are in each one of the objectives, that's actually really important um, to be able to... The information is the key of the game here, mm -hmm. and uh, and this is no, this is actually one of the epitomes of it, where yeah. you really, really have to um, make informed decisions on how to split. Yeah, so... I mean, in this situation, El Boyos does not need to be the ones to ban Kel'Thas, since they would have first access to him. And uh, they're chewing into their reserve time already, um, and they ban Zagara. Uh, Bonsai Legends with the response, um, they're in a bit of a, they're in the hot seat right now. There's a lot of danger in the hero pools uh, mm. currently that, that they have to account for. They have to account for Kel'Thas, they have to account for Li Ming, and uh, I, Tracer has been nerfed pretty effectively. Her win rate did drop pretty precipitously, but um, she's still on the table as a very slippery frustrating character to play against oh she's slippery they, all right they burn they ban the bright wing interesting so, so yeah I, global presence is fine is this yeah. is fine yeah i there's the kale toss immediately picked up by el boyos like snap mm. second uh decision right there so uh you know surprising nobody uh you know the nerfs were but a setback <laughs> kale toss is once again the assassin in the game yeah uh it, it's it's kind of frustrating because he was um at one point at 50 percent uh, win rate. Mm -hmm. He's back up there now. <laughs> yep. He he's certainly is. You know who else is back up there? Rexar. <laughs> so I dare all of our viewers, go look at Rexar's win rate on Hots Logs. He's actually in the top 10, which makes uh, no sense at all. Tracer is picked up by Bonsai Legends. Mm -hmm. um, Tracer can be a pretty reasonable um, pretty reasonable counter to Kael'thas if she's played if she's played effectively, mm. like I said last week, Bonsai Legends did play Tracer, so they do favor her in their current compositions. Um, yeah, we'll have to see what their second pick is if they want to uh, commit to another damage dealer or uh, fill out one of their utility roles. Yeah, um, what would you like to see picked here? I'd like probably to see, a laner, uh, maybe. I'd like to see like a thrall here, yeah. somebody to somebody to to really stick to a lane. Oh, oh boy. I'll let you go on this one, buddy. Oh, Sergeant Hammer. I haven't seen her in a while. And today I just learned about one thing uh, about her character. She's wearing a tank top. I get it? Get you. it? Tank. I hate you so much. This <laughs> partnership is over. I'm out. I'm done. All right. So, El Boyo, uh, getting <laughs> their, their next two picks here. Um, they go with Toronda. Oh. And uh, I like Toronda. And there's the Johanna as well. So, their composition is a sh absolute just smorgasbord of, <laughs> <laughs> of lockdown and crowd control <laughs> every single character they've picked so far has a stun uh available to them baseline right out of the gate yeah um, this is actually kind of dangerous for sergeant hammer because taronda is actually sergeant hammer's counter um and taronda kale thos can blow up a hammer i mean that is that is scary right there mm -hmm. so until sergeant hammer gets the uh graduating range or mobile um tank mode i don't i forget what it's called uh <laughs> the uh she's gonna be a prime target and, and it's gonna be really hard however she is great point control so um yeah. 
Yeah, um, if, if Bonsai Legends can get to the turn-in locations well enough in advance and give Hammer time to position appropriately and set up, they'll be in a good position to take some of these fights. Mm-hmm. Um, Lunara is banned out by Bonsai Legends. They spent a good bit of time chewing into their 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 pool there, uh, waiting on that character. Um, Lunara is a pretty decent pick. Uh, she doesn't ramp up in terms of danger until the later game, but um, I can understand. You know, the Wisp provides a decent amount of vision in all the bushes that are that are hidden throughout the map, mm-hmm. and you know, uh, late game. Losing keeps or losing keeps quickly is is a big detriment. So, um, etc is banned out by El Boyos. Uh, I'm kind of surprised at this one. I feel like they've got. I feel like El Boyos has enough lockdown to completely mitigate an etc mosh pit. The, it, it, you know that's not really an issue for them. This the, forces Bonsai Legends into uh, another tank pick, though. You know, etc does pair well with Sergeant Hammer though, because one of his his trait is to bo- boost the attack speed. Good of point. surrounding characters and tracer morale or sorry tracer oh, sergeant boy. hammer <laughs> are both great on the attack speed uh front and morales pairs very well with that uh that is a prime morales uh, stun or stim drone to uh hammer and, as is as is tracer mm-hmm. um yeah. i mean she is going to be sort of gated by that reload time but um but yeah morales is picked up by bonsai legends um so we've got a, an auto attack heavy composition potentially for Bonsai Legends. Uh, Johanna has a blind. Can we expect any other uh, any other sort of blinds picked up by El Boyos? I mean, we talked a bit about the the dual support uh, meta that's gone around. <laughs> what you think, Lili is going to get picked I up? I think I think you can go Lili for main support in Toronto for DPS and do just fine. Yeah, well, with their current composition with Murden picked up, I don't think you can pick up Lili. Um, uh, you know that's that storm bolt, bolt is so hard to uh, juke away from uh, when you're when you're ulting. So mm-hmm. yeah, probably not a Lily. Um, if they do go so, dual support, I would expect like a Rhaegar. Um, yeah, yeah. Or I, or something. My only thought on the dual support was just to provide the blinds. Mm-hmm. I think if you're not going to go Lily. You're better off just going with a full blown committed damage dealer. Yeah. And so. we'll see that with the thrall. Thrall is picked up. Uh, a real nice spread from El Boyos. They've got a long-range artillery strike with Kael'thas. They've got a solid, you know, dependable support with Taronda. A good tank, uh, you know, Thrall. Good solid frontliner to help support Johanna. Yeah. Bonsai Legends. They are they're banking on the Hammer Morales play. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're banking on Hammer being able to get into position quickly on these on these uh, altar points and to you know bait El Boyos into that Hammer range. Yeah, um, it's going to be a game of protect the hammer. It's mm-hmm. that simple. You know and, they uh, <laughs> they're they're calling Chromie a artillery mage. I don't know if you knew that. I I one hundred percent can believe that from so. what I've seen in her uh, in her, her. Hey, there's a double support. Oh, hey, okay, it's a thing. All right, it's a so it's a thing. Stars picked up. Um, I would you know, you know, I honestly I, think Toronto's got the better damage output right now. Mm-hmm. I think Toronto's going to go for the DPS build. And I think Tastar is going to go for shields. Yeah, uh, honestly, Tastar with his um, with the shield. Uh, what's what's the leftover shields? Um, uh, Kala's embrace. Yeah, something like that. Uh, with that and the leeching plasma. Yeah. Uh, oh, he's he, perfectly acceptable. Yeah, great the, for Sergeant the, Hammer. Amazing yeah. for tr- Sergeant Hammer. He's he's playing against Sergeant Hammer. No, no, no. Oh, <laughs> I am. <laughs> Son, you need to drink some more. Yeah, I do. <laughs> so, False Dad, your favorite is picked up to cap things off for Bonsai Legends. Mm-hmm. So much auto attack coming from Bonsai Legends. We have Hammer, we have Tracer, we have Falstad. If Falstad opts to go for an auto attack build, he will be even more devastating. And all of them carried by Lieutenant Morales with uh, probably a Stim Drone. If Morales does not pick Stim Drone, I will eat my hat. I have one right here. Um, <laughs> you know, um, the other thing is uh, Morales has that uh, grenade that, that knocks people back. That is great for... Uh, interrupting for for poking and interrupting the the uh it is. objective turn-ins you are so. correct it really is mm-hmm. so i mean they have a they have a fair amount of poke and, and i mean they've got hammer on the edge so if they are late to the party mm-hmm. they can set up you know much further than they typically would to interrupt at the altar so both teams with options toronto has owls thralls uh chain lightning also is a pretty reliable interrupt at long range 
Lots of long range abilities from Elboyos to assist them if they're sort of late in um, contesting the altar points. Um, but yeah, uh, sort of a uh, mm -hmm. sort of a, a a a new age meta comp from Elboyos. We've got the two supports with Kael'thas versus sort of a. Uh, uh, gimmick isn't the word I want to use, but this Bonsai Legends has a very clear-cut strategy of boosting auto attacks. Falstad, Sergeant Hammer, Tracer. Um, this is the premier auto attack composition right now. So um, we'll mm -hmm. have to see. Uh, I, I feel like they have to focus appropriately. Bonsai Legends has to focus their damage in on single targets at all time. Their shot calling has to be on point if they want to bring targets down. Um, mm -hmm. I, so yeah, and we'll see how this one goes out. What's your gut? What's your gut right now? What's I really want to see uh, Morales and and uh, any. Uh, I, you know what? I, I really do like Sergeant Hammer. I she's yeah. she was my first main, and I miss was, her dearly. That, that was back when we actually bought master skins on characters. Oh of my god! Characters. Oh, those were the days. <laughs> oh, so, ten thousand gold wasted. Gone forever. I could have bought like three characters. I could have bought two more characters with that gold, but oh. no, I bought a fancy Vala skin. I could have bought like, that piggy bank. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> All right. So as always, we will do the character introductions once we zone in on the game here. But mm -hmm. this is Towers of Doom. And this is Chair League. Yes. So welcome again to all of our viewers. Uh, thank you for joining us here tonight. We will be kicking things off shortly. Yep, and we have El Boyos versus Bonsai Legends tonight. Uh, for all of you just tuning in here. Man. All right, so uh, on the left-hand side here in the blue, shouting out to Twitch and Mom, we've got El Boyos. We've got Sheej on Tassadar. We've got Super Jova on the Thrall. Byakugan on Johanna. Vendetto on Toronda. And Karazin on Kael'thas. That is very, very neat name. Um, in the right-hand side, ripping the red trunks. We've got Bonsai Legends. We've got Thog4 on Falstad. Johnny K.A. on Lieutenant Morales. That Mr. Matt on Muradin. Deplea on Tracer. And Squish Tank on on Sergeant Hammer. I hope they're not squishy tonight because it would be a very short game. Mm -hmm. And we're jumping right into it here uh, with yep. the dance of... But a both five on four. Mixing, both, both teams mixing it up in the middle here, but yeah, a five on four. Huge damage goes out onto Bonsai Legends, and Murden does go down very early. And Falstad goes down too. Falstad. Yeah, wow. Uh, a lot of damage put out by that five group in mid. Um, they really probably should have disengaged when they saw five there. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But that's okay. They, you know, uh, the mean, dance. The, the the XP that the XP that Hammer Keen did top was enough to mitigate the two kills in middle. Mm -hmm. Like like El Boyos only uh, you know smidgen ahead, and that's gonna that's gonna you know even out as soon as uh, Bonsai Legends gets more back into their lanes. Mm -hmm. And Kael'thas really trying to. Uh, uh, catch Tracer uh, over engaged here, but it, Tracer's not taking that bait. All right, so as far as towns are concerned, we're seeing Gathering Storm from the Falstad, so it is going to be a Mage Dad build, not an auto attack build. Uh, trauma trigger coming from the Morales, very standard stuff here. Very standard stuff. We are seeing. Oh, Toronto does go down. Yeah, uh, Toronto gets off picked there. off. Sorry, I was, I was, I was, I was gawking at the talents. I didn't get a chance to see it. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but uh, we're seeing Lethal Blast, con Concussive Blast damage talent picked up at level 1 from the, th the Siege tank. Yeah, so not Maelstrom. The they're expecting to be in the thick of it. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I'm uh, I'm kind of surprised no Maelstrom uh, shells from the, oh. from the uh, Sergeant Hammer there. That might mean that she's not going for graduating range. We'll have to um, see what, uh, what the, how this plays out. Mm -hmm. But a big first scrap. Spawn, yeah, first Ultra spawn here is a 3 spawn, as I mentioned earlier. And it's a big scrap. We've got... Four in the middle here for El Boyos versus the three for Bonsai Legends. Uh, the Squish Tank and Johnny K off capping the right hand side altar, and it looks like this is going to continue onward into the middle here. Uh, Murden very, very injured, and Mr. Matt gets back and is able to survive. Yep, everyone actually surviving that uh, engagement there, uh, but. Uh, El Boyo is coming out a little bit ahead with two objectives capped over one. So uh, everyone's just coming back. Tracer took a lot of damage early on there and uh, was unable to participate in most of that fight. So 
But uh, Falstad joining in on a five-man stack in the middle here, and they're looking to uh, do some do some damage to mid. Yeah, they're missing out on a lot of soak right now, though. So you've got to make something. You've got to make something happen immediately when you mm -hmm. stack up that heavily. Mm -hmm. And looks like they just decided to split again. So yep, Squish Tank heads north to uh, pair off against Supernova. Um, Who's that? I I don't know, man. Uh, but anyways, put up a pull up a chair, man, and just watch the game. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, we'll see what's going on here. We got, you know, looks like Fog Four and that Mr. Matt are gonna grab this uh, the near side, uh, the near side uh, camp here with the the, the sappers, and uh, we'll see if these end up pushing f as far as they can. They will, there's still the two towers, still the gate up at bottom lane here for El Boyos, and uh, yeah, they, we gotta push those sappers and. Taronda and Super Jova, Vendetta and Super Jova do manage to pick off Siege Tank at the top here, so they are going to have a uh, free access to the top lane goblins that uh, the goblin sappers. Wow, <laughs> top lane pumpkin, uh, pumpkin bros. That's their new name. They're pumpkin bros. No, they're goblin um, sappers. You're fine. No, no, they're, they're, they're pumpkin bros. <laughs> no, no, we're not going to have this argument right now. Not in front of the kids. <laughs> I mean, not in front of the Twitch stream. Yeah. So yeah, altars are spawning. We've got two altars. Uh, Top, near side, and far side for uh, both teams here, and both teams with uh, with camps pushing. Uh, excellent timing on these camps. I really, really, really like it. It's distracting a couple members of each team to uh, you know pull them off, and uh, this is time for Elboyos to strike. Uh, Mr. Matt only just now getting into position to uh, to support, and uh, it looks like Johnny K is going to be able to cap that, and he does. So one for one trade from both teams. Huge damage going out onto yep. the siege tank. Goodbye. Yeah, that was a great lunar flare coming in, uh, catching three of their members in that single lunar flare, and they really have to back out with their yeah, low health. Oh, and it's too that was little, so too much late. damage. Falstad is brought down and co launched careening into the air by Karazin's uh, uh, flame strike. Stop! Stop! He's already dead. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and Super Jova doing very well, you know, uh, being being up up on a chair, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Uh, sorry. If, if for those of you who don't recognize the name, he is you know on the front page of that's, this that's, league that's, here. That's, that's our chair, man. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, both teams, uh, you know. Starting to pull away a little bit, El Boyos is uh, level 9 versus level 7.5. Um, El Boyos looking poised to uh, win the race to level 10, and that's going to be dangerous at this next uh, this next altar phase. They're likely going to have 10 before the next altar pops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, um, the engagements are just a little bit dangerous on the side of... Uh uh, Bonsai Legends, only because, like I said, the Lunar Flare into uh, Kael'thas is just... It's nuts. There's so much mm -hmm. damage. and um, well, So much damage was just dealt to Super Jova at top. Mm -hmm. uh, face, face tanking uh, Siege Tank. And, uh, you know, El Boyos, they are going to have 10. If they're patient here, they're going to have 10 in time for this uh, for this altar to spawn. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a give on, on the side of Bonsai Legends unless they yeah, want to lose Jova, all their lives. Super Jova in mid, giving his team just enough XP to get to level 10. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, let's get these alts real quick here. We're seeing Sundering, Force Wall, Falling Sword from Johanna, and oh, Phoenix beautiful. from Kael'thas. No alt yet picked by Taronda. I would expect Starfall, but uh, that's just me geeking out about the interesting parts of oh, the Oh, and a great yeah. Sunder to, to finish off Morales in the back line there. And that is uh, why you don't go in on a 4-on-5 with, uh, with a heroic lead. Yeah, uh, the, the, the Sergeant Hammer is is starting to actually be a little bit of a detriment. It, she's having difficulty getting to these engagements in time. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of these four-on-five engagements that we've seen, it's been Sergeant Hammer that's been sort of oh, out. Oh, no! And, and lots of damage going out. Taronda does reveal her uh, alt to be Starfall, and uh, that's going to be, that's gonna be uh, probably the first keep of the game going in favor of El Boyos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just so much damage, and and the, uh, <laughs> the they're doing a great job of using those uh, those walls to zone, uh, split the team up. I mean, there's so much crowd control. Mm -hmm. There's so much crowd control on on El Boyos that it's it's they're they're able to isolate the hammer, and just chain stuns while they put they while they put them down. And so much of Bonsai Legend's strategy, so much of their damage, 
is focused around this Sergeant Hammer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Siege doing a Siege Shedge Siege doing a great job of just uh, being a <laughs> being a Tassadar. Um, you know those force walls, the sight, uh, just doing and a great a big invade coming in from uh, El Boyo Super Joe going in deep. Uh, to try and catch uh, Johnny Ka, he does manage to get out in time mm -hmm. and uh, top off the playa. And both both players, none the worse for wear. It looks like they're just going to participate in bringing this keep back onto their own side mm -hmm. and uh, cope with the uh, the sappers down here, which are just creeping in on their core. Yep, and, and like I said, this is why information is king on this map. Um, knowing that the other team only had three members sitting at the uh, sitting at the merc camp, that enabled them to uh, make a conscious decision to pull so, in. And uh, Sergeant Siege Hammer, tank. oh my God, squish squish tank, not long for this world. Yeah, squish has tank is squished. Everything thrown at has everything thrown at them. A full five man rotation absolutely pounces on that. Mm -hmm. Poor poor Siege tank, poor poor, poor squish tank. Yep, squish tank is uh, is a squished. Um, so the entire four-man out of the five-man team rotating down to mid, but it is a four-on-four four right now. There goes and the stim, stim drone does go off on the playa. If this is this is the time for you know some serious damage to go out by uh, by tracer. The mighty gust does disengage them though, push them off, and oh my gosh, huge damage going out onto the false dad. Consequently, brought down under the uh, sundering from thrall there. Yeah, and uh, and Kael'thas being a little cheeky there and actually chasing, um, but you know, sh uh, shortly Kael'thas is double stuns. Oh Kael'thas no, Kael'thas stuns Murden, Murden stuns Kael'thas, and oh my gosh, so many bombs going out, so many bombs! Oh jeez! Oh no! And Tracer going <laughs> the down. Chain bomb reflects back onto Tracer. It, it started on Tracer, ended on Murden, killed Tracer again. Yeah, and the um, Avatar having to be popped here um, to try to. Stay alive. Uh, stay alive here against uh, Super Jova, but um, the, uh, Mr. Matt does get away here at the very end. Mm -hmm. um, but the four-man rotation going in to try to punish that that uh, Kael'thas death. And oh, well, Vendetta just a little bit a little bit forward, but not enough damage from Mr. Matt and Johnny Ka to finish that off, despite getting that initial stun with the storm bolt. Yeah, no so, no assassins in the area, unfortunately. Yeah, no assassins in the hood, man. Mm -hmm. So both teams, uh, you know, we have a level 13 advantage currently for El Boyos. Um, as far as talents are going, sorry, we've been keeping up with all the crazy action here. We are seeing a Lunar Blaze at 7 for Toronto. So she is absolutely keyed in on targeting this Siege tank. And once again, we're seeing a 5v... Oh, no, it's a 4v4. That's a little bit better in their favor. But mm -hmm. all that Starfall damage, oh all my gosh. that damage going out. And that's another pick. Both... Uh, Morales and Falstad fall under that withering Starfall, uh, Kael'thas, uh, Johanna damage. Yeah, the 13s, 13s coming out on the side of El Boyos did not do them any favors. Yeah, no, the the talent tier disadvantage was was a, a really frustrating one to try and overcome. Mm -hmm. And this is really poor timing uh, on the side of uh, Bonsai Legends. They oh. are short two people yeah. on the. Yeah, unfortunate timing for yeah. them. More, yeah, they they are just yeah they they're they're a little bit behind in terms of just just personnel on the field, and that's gonna that's gonna leave them under you know sort of understaffed at these uh, at these altars. Yeah, and Byakugan, you doing a great job of zoning out the interrupt on the right side altar enabling them to get the most dangerous one honestly and Falstad just trying to sneak the bottom one uh, with, with yeah, Kael'thas in the area. To, the player needs to chase this Kael'thas out and uh, Thog needs to move taking a lot of damage from that Phoenix mm -hmm. um, Johnny K in position to help uh, top him off again but yep. the player taking huge amounts of damage almost her entire hit point bar gone in an instant Johnny K.A. pounced on by Byakugan and uh, it's a route you cannot maintain without that false dead. Thog manages to, to gust away, but Chain Bomb does catch the uh, does catch uh, uh, Tracer and false dead yet again. Yep, and that is a three for t uh, zero trade. Um, mm -hmm. And they caught the they got the oh the, god the altar as well. Yeah, and uh, yeah, bringing Murden really low too. Yeah, it's looking really dire for Bonsai Legends right now. Mm -hmm. There's you know, El Boyos is going to take this middle keep. Then they're going to turn around and work over this uh, work over this altar. Mm -hmm. um, they've got all the time in the world, and right now they get this altar and they get boss. They seal this game. Um, the the Super Jova posturing for boss while Kara's in. Uh, 
you, you know, caps this caps this altar. This is potentially game ending right here. If and there, here we go. Here we go. Buckle in. Super yep. Jova standing in the uh, standing in the angry green stuff, and they're forcing this boss down. This may be the end of the game right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the boss does do four damage on this particular map. So that four damage has just been secured, and that is a GG. That is it. GG's called out. El Boyos with the win tonight, pushing their record up to four and one for the season. Bonsai Legends unfortunately falling, dropping their record to two and three. Yeah. Uh, wow, what a game. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that was that was that was pretty firmly, you know, that one was was pretty firmly in El Boyos' favor. Um, from probably about like you know level four. I mean, they even got the two quick kills at the beginning there. That's that's frustrating to that's frustrating to deal with. Um, I, so the the hammer play. Mm -hmm. Do you think do you think it was worthwhile? Do you think it paid off? Uh I mean, it's hard to say it paid off when when they didn't cap they, they didn't win. You know, um, I I. Do have to say the rotations, the fact that she couldn't rotate with the team, um, was a serious detriment. Yeah. Uh, as much as I would, uh, I'd love to see her. Uh, I don't think she's a good fit on this map, um, especially since she can't. She, if she's defending a point, she can't cap. Um, Do you think uh, we see Sergeant Hammer taking first aid at level seven? Mm -hmm. Do you think um, taking the increased uh, Z? Uh, the decreased Z. Z, yeah, the decreased Z cooldown. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that would have been a more beneficial talent choice with <sighs> this with this sort of situation, where every minute or so you're scrambling to a new position? So she took um, vigorous assault, mm -hmm. which is the the vampiric, essentially vampiric assault uh, of the past. Um, with that much self healing, she was looking to stay in the fights longer. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know that that was necessarily where, where I, I don't think hammer be. ever really got an opportunity to, to consistently attack mm -hmm. every time that, uh, every time that hammer set up shop, uh, we saw Toronto drop on, we saw Toronto drop a lunar flare, uh, you know, thrall drop the root, kale thrust drop the stun. And then, you know, later in the game, we saw Johanna engaging with falling sword onto the hammer. Yeah, uh, I, I feel like I feel like you know vigorous assault and first aid were never really had an, uh, first aid very rarely had an opportunity to get popped because you know before the damage uh, hammer got a hundred to zeroed numerous times throughout that map uh, throughout that match it was a very difficult for hammer to really get any value out of those talent picks. Mm -hmm. um, the Taronda I think was still definitely the counter the direct yeah. counter to a sergeant hammer multiple yeah. times you saw the lunar flare falling out uh far you know really far out where where she obviously knew where sergeant hammer was mm -hmm. and um and it was absolutely capitalized on uh with lunar blaze at seven um yeah. she has an insane amount of range on her lunar flare and she is able to just uh make sure that sergeant hammer has a bad day <laughs> every single no, day uh, v vendetta certainly certainly seem to have one against sergeant hammers <laughs> um the the build that was picked was pretty much tailor made to ensure that uh that sergeant hammer had a bad day mm -hmm. um just a full blown owl build with lunar blaze at 7 and starfall at 10 we saw huntress's fury at 13 which i i actually kind of like that one um uh, helps you know force out a little a little extra damage um uh, she wasn't concerned with healing so she did not need to take any sort of healing talents um mm. I, I believe it's uh, gosh i'm trying to remember the exact name of the talent it's it's uh, escaping me at the moment overflowing light overflowing light that's yeah. what it was. i mean we mm. they, she had tacitar to sort of back herself up um Kael'thas had his own self heal thrall has his own self heals um, and honestly, Jokina. honestly, yeah. Tastar with the Kala's Embrace and Leeching Plasma combo just uh, makes sure that anyone who's auto attacking gets their health back. So, yeah. it, I mean, Toronto did not have to worry one bit about healing, and it showed. Mm -hmm. She was able to devote a lot of damage, um, you know, for her team, uh, putting out almost mirror amounts of damage as the Thrall. Um, to the surprise of few, um, Kael'thas topped the damage charts. Um, oh, Kael'thas. Oh, Kael'thas. Uh, with uh, with a, a, a gravity crush uh, 
build. Um, that is actually, you know, like like we said, the, the, this build was tailor made to um, to to eliminate Sergeant Hammer and to help, uh, you know, just finish off Sergeant Hammer. I feel like they really, uh, they, they they you know they really they really got into Bonsai's composition and were able to effectively counter Bonsai's composition. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, like we said, that, that that all the eggs were in the basket on Sergeant Hammer. And uh, the effective counters were drafted by El Boyos, and they were they were exploited. Yeah, you know, one of the other things that I think um, I don't know if anyone's really mentioned it uh, recently is uh, Tracer is actually pretty hard to play against a Kael'thas. Um Kael'thas with with the with uh, with the Living Bomb. Yeah, uh, you know, he up pretty much damage. Yeah, yeah, he pretty much hits uh, her with Living Bomb every single time, and if he can land another wind or um you know drop the drop the um the fire thing <laughs> uh flame strike <laughs> thank you sorry i couldn't think of the name of that one um if he can drop the flame strike where he knows tracer's gonna be uh it's just mm-hmm. a, an insane amount of damage and honestly during these objective fights uh, you know where your other team is like the other team is on you it you know there's yeah. it's not really much um much Not to, much mystery about like oh where's the, where's the tracer oh they're right in front of me shooting me in the mm-hmm. face yep so uh, dropping that that uh, living bomb really makes the team to, uh, or should make the team uh, split up and mm-hmm. they were able to capitalize on that by picking off uh, you know them one by one whenever they came in or just uh, taking them down I mean and and with Tastar's sight as well I mean they they just always knew what and we're seeing what they were up against we saw, we saw double vigorous assaults we saw vigorous assault from uh falstad and vigorous assault from sergeant hammer mm-hmm. um thoughts on those see i don't think that's a that's a very effective talent to be completely honest with you because i think if if you're going to go with you if you're gonna go with that mm-hmm. i feel like you have to take like season marksman at level one to help boost your basic attack damage um, yeah I feel like if you're going to take Gathering Storm, you're going to take Boomerang at four. And you're going to take, like, I, I feel like I, I, it seems to me like Falstad sort of changed their mind halfway through the mm-hmm. uh, the game. They began with a Mage Stad style build mm-hmm. by taking Gathering Storm, you know, increasing the damage of that Q whenever it hits somebody. It might have been a misclick, to be completely honest with you. It, because, it, it um, may have been. It may have been. Because if they were building for a Morales, you know, they, they, they might have thought about it and said oh you know we're going for an AA type build and then <laughs> i don't know about you but uh, when i play false the first thing i go to is mage stat so <laughs> it's like a, a natural reaction to click gathering storm and i've um, i've myself been um uh a victim of that uh, muscle mm-hmm. memory there mm-hmm. so so i i mean considering how the rest of the build was i think that might have been a misclick but um, yeah. if there was a misclick, they, I think False Edge should have gone uh, the route, uh, you know, gone in all, all the way there and uh, mm-hmm. gone full Mage Stead because Mage Stead's getting its wings clipped. So better play more of it as, or as much of it as you can. Enjoy it while it lasts. That's, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it just it seemed to me like. Uh, like they were trying to take some of the heat off of Lieutenant Morales. Um, with those two picks, but I, I feel like, you know, you have to, you, there are some points where you just have to, you have to rely on your healer. Mm-hmm. You, you really have to rely on your healer at some, at some point and, and commit to the role that your character is designed for. Mm-hmm. And I mean, Falstad, you're, if you're, if you're, if you're playing Falstad, you want to be doing that damage. You want to be laying people out. If you're a hammer, you want to be doing that damage you want to be securing those positions you want to be getting to those positions in time mm. and uh you know if you're a healer your job's to keep people topped off keep you know or not even topped off keep people healed to a reasonable level and um i i feel like by by trying to shift some of that uh weight off of lieutenant morales and onto themselves falstad and hammer may have you know sort of handicapped themselves and and you know uh, not really not really explored all the options that they could have uh, they could have partaken in yeah, I mean, they just make themselves a little bit less effective when uh, there's an opportunity, and that's really what it comes down to. Um, 
but overall really really well done from uh both teams just holding their own on a lot of the fights there there were you know a lot of moments where you weren't sure um which way things were going to go uh i do want to point out tracer did get untouchable at four that is four is such an early level um to decide whether or not you want gathering power <laughs> and, yeah that's and, a tough one that's a tough call to make yeah and a gutsy call to make it is I, a very gutsy I, call I, I do respect that I, I do give the player a little bit of a credit there for uh for holding out hope you know just that's that's really tempting but uh if you're not able to capitalize it it's a dead talent and um yeah and unfortunately unfortunately you know she was able or tracer was in it, unable to capitalize on that yeah, unfortunately, just just the two just the two takedowns. Um, now Tracer was involved in both of those takedowns, so she did get a little bit of benefit from that talent for a short period of time. Yeah, but, but uh, bonuses yeah. are lost on death. Yeah, unfortunately, she was brought down a couple of times, and that mm -hmm. didn't really didn't really play out in the long term there. No, and and again, that's that's one of the things about this this particular map. Um, we see a lot of teams build for late game. This map is not one that you that 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 works out very effectively because a lot of the times this map doesn't go to twenty. I mean, um, you see enough ultra spawns that you actually don't often see people getting to twenty on this map. This is a thirteen uh, minute game. Yeah. So um, this is actually game. one of those few maps that uh, really gives uh, you know early game strong early game uh, heroes uh, a lot of credit and a lot of um you know they, they do really well on these maps on this map rather yeah, and 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 i mean some characters with with very little ramp up time have great value on this map so uh, you know a character like falstad is very good sort of out of the gate whereas so, yeah. a character like oh. you know yeah where where you know whereas you know a character like um i'm trying to think of lunara another, someone like lunara yeah huge ramp up time on that character uh you know lunara frequently won't get played on this map for that exact reason mm -hmm. thrall super good right out of the gate kael'thas super good right out of the gate same with taronda johanna i mean these characters you their abilities are augmented but the abilities that they come with out of the gate are absolutely just staggering um Muradin's got a bit of a ramp up time. You want that piercing bolt. You want that, you know, avatar. You want stone form at sixteen if you can make it that far. That's when Muradin starts getting really, you know, unkillable, really untouchable, really and starts scary. making a difference in the yeah. team fights. Um, you know, I feel like Sergeant Hammer gets gets better and better with every level, but like, you know, I, I feel like that she's got uh, if she's not breaking down towers right out of the gate, mm. then. Um, then she's uh, she's a little bit wasted in the early game. Yeah, her 16 is really pivotal, Sergeant Hammers. Um, you know, either graduating range or the the mobile turret, as I call it. Um, I, I forget hovering. The hover, hover tank. Yeah, hover tank. Hover. Um, yeah, those are extremely um, tempo swing uh, talents, and 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 she did, just didn't even get a chance to get to that point. So it's. Mm. Really unfortunate that that happened, um, and but but it really shows the value of of powerful early game uh, heroes. Uh, so that's that's really what it comes down to. Like Tastar, actually Tastadar's shields, you know, being so strong mm -hmm. at, right out of the gates, really effective as well. So, you know, you you see that really emphasized in in this particular matchup, and um, and it, it may have been a little bit of a comp loss. Uh, even more than um, than you know gameplay. Well, like I said, El Boyos mm -hmm. is playing sort of the new age meta, and it's the new age meta for a reason. It's uh, pretty effective. You mean he's they're playing Kael'thas? They're playing Kael'thas. <laughs> they're playing Starfall and Kael'thas. Yeah. I've seen that combo really frequently. We we casted I think at least one game last week that mm -hmm. uh, had Kit Toronto Kael'thas, and it's absolutely devastating. We've suffered it, at like, the hands it's of so brutal. Yeah. Ooh. So so. Add that into your add that into your repertoire, kids. Yeah, go ban home that out. And practice. Go home and practice Taronda and Kael'thas and play them at the same time. Yep. You, you yep. individual person, go play them at the same right time. Yep. <laughs> so, all right. Well, that'll do it for us tonight. Um, we only had one game here. We used that new um, request a or I guess El Boyos used that new request a caster uh, option. So thank you very much for uh, for requesting us. Um, we were happy to. 
oblige and it yeah, tip tip your waiters <laughs> uh tip your hat um <laughs> Okay. Anyway, uh, have a good night, everyone. If you enjoyed our stream, uh, be sure to follow. And uh, we'll see you on Friday for Clairvoyance versus Wraith's No Tear Shampoo Redux. Oh, yeah. We got some memes. Yeah. That is that is a rematch of the um, last weekend's uh, Pro Division qualifiers. So yeah, it should be... that's, that's going to be scrappy. I'm excited for that one. Yeah. So we'll see you guys on uh, Guys and Gals on Friday. Have a good night.